All right. So um, welcome everyone to the Youth, Family, and Community Sciences Graduate Program Info Session. Um, my name is Annie Hardison Moody, and I am the Director of Graduate Programs in the YFCS program. Um, we are just thrilled to have you all here today. And there are a few of us who are gonna be talking about the YFCS program. Um, and so I will let them introduce themselves um, and maybe Deidre, if you wanna go next, and then you can tag somebody to go after you. Okay, thank you so much. Hi everybody, I'm Deidre Craig. I do all of our communications for our department, um, as well as the U Family and Community Sciences Graduate Program, which is in the Department of Agricultural and Human Sciences. Um, I also do all of the coordinating for our graduate certificate program, and I'll be sharing more about our graduate certificate offerings um, later in the presentation. And I'll pass this on to Dr. Maru Gonzalez. Hello, everyone. My name is Maru Gonzalez. I am an assistant professor, and I also teach in the YFCS program, and I'm a youth development specialist as well. Hi, everybody. My name is Raven Kingsbury. I'm a student services specialist in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences and a recent graduate of the program. Thank you, Raven. So um, we are very excited that you all are with us today and we're gonna move through some slides pretty quickly and, and kind of give you an orientation to the program and help you to understand a little bit about what we do in the Youth Family and Community Sciences Graduate Program, which as Deidre mentioned, is a part of the Agricultural and Human Sciences Department at NC State. Um, and we will have time at the end for questions. So if you have questions and you wanna go ahead and put them in the chat box, you can do that. And we can either respond via chat or we can respond at the end, um, but we will have time at the end for um, questions. So what we'll be doing tonight is um, we shared our introductions. Um, and then uh, we'll, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the YFCS program. Um, then we'll have Dr. Gonzalez will share a little bit about um, who she is and her, and her work as an assistant professor and teaching in the department. And then I'll talk about degree offerings, um, the master's degree offerings that we have. And then Deidre will talk about the certificate programs. Um, and then we'll talk to you about kind of some of the logistics of the program. So what is it like to be in a distance education program? And um, what is that like, you know, from a student perspective? So we'll have Raven sharing a little bit about that. Um, and then we'll talk about, uh, we'll share a little bit about what some of our alums are doing in the world um, and then how you can stay connected with us and learn more about the program. So like I said, we'll have plenty of time for questions at the end. If you have some right now, feel free to put those in the chat, um, but we are really glad that you all are here. So a little bit about the Youth, Family, and Community Sciences program. We are a part of the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences at NC State, which, uh, and we are in the Department of Agricultural and Human Sciences. So one of the great things about being in the Department of Agricultural and Human Sciences is we're part of a broader interdisciplinary department where people are doing things from youth development, community development, to leadership um, and agriculture and extension education. Um, we also have folks doing nutrition and kind of public health work. So it's really interdisciplinary and the faculty and the, um, the staff who are part of our department, we're a pretty big department, we have 90 people. Um, that's both professors or faculty members and staff. Um, we do a lot of really, really interesting things. So I definitely encourage you to check out the department's website, not just the YFCS program website. Um, and our program is interdisciplinary as well. So we really wanna take advantage of the faculty that we have and the expertise that they have um, across both the worlds of extension, but also youth development and human services. And so our students are also working across these interdisciplinary fields. So we have students who are out in the world doing um, work in public health, in extension, in nutrition, in um, you know, working in childcare centers, working for nonprofits that are focused on youth and families, and working in the educational sector. Um, so let's see. Um, a little bit more about our specific program, the Youth, Family, and Community Sciences program within the department. Um, we are a fully distance master's um, and certificate program. We have been a, a distance program since the beginning, so it's not... Um, doing distance education is not new for us. I know that we've had... Um, 
you know, we've all made a lot of pivots during this pandemic to, um, to doing work remotely and to um, collaborating with each other remotely. Um, but we have been doing that in the YFCS program since we started. And so we're really focused on um, ways to support students in that distance education. And so it gives our students a lot of flexibility in terms of you know, um, most or all of our courses, our classes, when they meet, they meet outside of traditional work hours, um, which allows our students to um, be a part of the program part time. They can uh, be a part of the program while they're while they're working. Um, and um, it gives that flexibility. The DE program or the, our distance education program gives you that flexibility. We also through our program, we try to be flexible enough to allow students to focus on a particular program area. So you might be really focused in particular on let's say youth development and you really wanna focus your, your electives and your, um, your, uh, those course, that, that particular coursework on youth development. But we also have students who wanna gain a broad perspective in the field of family science or in, um, they wanna go through our, our, our certification track through the National Council on Family Relations where you really gain a broad perspective on family science and on the study of the family. So you can kind of make the program your own. And I think Raven might talk about that in a little bit as well. Um, and then I'll share, you know, some of our um, kind of like hooray things that have happened because of our, our excellent program and our um, faculty. We were voted the number one online masters in human and family development by bethschools.com and the most customizable online masters in human and family development by onlinemasters.com. So very exciting things about the program. Um, and as I mentioned, our faculty are really interdisciplinary. So they're doing all sorts of really interesting research and extension work and teaching. Um, and these are the faculty who, uh, if you join us in the Youth Family Community Sciences program, who would be kind of your primary faculty. But as I mentioned earlier, we are part of a broader department called Agricultural and Human Sciences. So like I said, feel free to check out our department's website and you can see the full faculty listing to learn more about what other faculty are doing in other arenas like local foods or leadership development. Um, but in the Youth Family and Community Sciences program, these are the faculty members who teach in the YFCS program and who you would predominantly have and who would serve um, you know, as your advisors as you go into the program. So definitely encourage you to learn a little bit more about our faculty by visiting our website. And to that uh, effect, I'd like to uh, introduce you to, because some of you have joined us since then, Dr. Maru Gonzalez, who is an assistant professor in our department. And she's going to talk a little bit about being a faculty member in the YFCS program um, and her research and what she does. Thank you so much, Dr. Hardison Moody. So I um, both teach in the YFCS program and I do research and extension work. So first I'll talk a little bit about the courses I teach and then I'll talk a bit about my research and extension work. So I teach um, courses related to youth development and complex family issues, as well as um, I'm teaching a new course this summer called Exploring Social Justice and Diversity in Youth and Family Sciences, which I'm really excited about because it's the first of its kind in our department. And um, I'm planning next May Mester to um, launch a study abroad course in Spain in El Camino de Santiago. I don't know um, if any of you are familiar with that, but it's a pilgrimage across Northern Spain and we'll spend um, about two weeks there. It's a, it's a three week course, but we'll spend about two weeks in Spain looking at family and culture on the Camino de Santiago. So it's gonna be a really great experience. We were supposed to go last May, it was picked up you know, we had students signed up, there was a lot of interest, um, but of course then COVID happened. And so we had to put it on the back burner, but we're looking forward to doing it again next year. And um, there'll be more information coming out, but certainly if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to me. One thing I will say is that um, it was deemed one of the lower cost uh, study abroad programs. We were really focused on making this study abroad experience as accessible as possible. And, um, and so it's, it should be a really um, enriching 
experience um, for everyone involved, both students and faculty. And then I also um, teach the supervised professional experience, which is the course that you'll take your last semester. It's essentially your internship or practicum. And all of the teaching faculty uh, teach this class. It occurs on a rotating basis. So I'm teaching it this semester and then someone else will teach it in the fall. But, um, but uh, these are the courses I, I currently teach. And so if you, um, if you end up um, enrolling in the program, then chances are I would, I would have you at one point or another. And then I also have various areas of interest and inquiry across both research and extension. And this is something to keep in mind, especially if you're interested in the thesis track and you want to do research. It's, um, it's important to look for faculty members whose research interests align with yours. And so if you're looking at potentially writing a thesis in the area of youth development, um, then I would be probably the one to work with you since that's my core area of focus. Um, and specifically my research interests um, are related to youth development, specifically youth activism and youth belonging and youth voice. I also focus on working with LGBTQ plus youth and social justice issues more, more broadly, <clears throat> school climate, I have a background in education, so I'm um, interested in things like school climate and bullying and school and community collaboration, and also developing young people's critical consciousness. And in terms of extension, I have a program called Pass the Mic Youth, which is a multimedia program. It's a youth-led, youth-centered podcast and blog that's aimed at amplifying youth voices, shining a spotlight on youth activism, and providing faculty members, educators, youth serving professionals with resources um, to develop critical consciousness. And we're actually in the process right now of pilot testing a curriculum that we wrote on based on a framework we created called critical positive youth development. And then I also um, work on a, an initiative called Empowering Youth and Families, which is an extension pro a program that, that spans the state of North Carolina and neighboring states and it focuses on um, opioid prevention um, and working specifically with families and young people in rural areas of North Carolina. And then um, beyond that, I've, I focus on centering diversity, equity and inclusion in extension. So collaborating with folks um, in the world of extension um, and looking at ways to um, make matters of diversity, equity, and inclusion more central, uh, centrally focused to the work of extension. Thank you so much, Dr. Gonzalez. We really appreciate that. And um, as she mentioned, um, you know, getting to know the faculty is really important at this stage when you're trying to figure out what program you're interested in or if you're interested in our program. And particularly if you're on the, the MS track, um, identifying a faculty member whose research aligns with yours is really important. One thing that I did want to point out that I realized that I've talked about um, is the word extension. And um, for those of you who are not familiar with the land grant system, um, NC State is a, is a land grant university. And as part of being, um, as, a, as a part of that uh, kind of institutional system, we have sort of three pillars of the work that we do in our department and um, in this program. And they are research, teaching, and extension. And by extension, what we mean is kind of extending the work of the university into the community. So in North Carolina, a lot of the ways that that works is we have 100 county offices, county cooperative extension <laughs> offices that are, um, that are shared, uh, offices between NC State and NC a &T State University. And um, so we have field faculty who we work with in each of the counties, but, but essentially that's what we mean. When we talk about extension, when you hear us say extension, we mean like taking the work of the university, the research, the teaching that we do and really bringing it to and partnering with communities to do that work. Um, so I just wanted to share that. <clears throat> 
So we want to talk a little bit about the programs that we offer. So you might have looked around on our website and, and seen that you're interested in the YFCS program. And we wanted to share a little bit about um, what that would look like if you join our program. So to begin, we have two master's degree programs. We have what's called the MR degree. And a lot of times people say, what does the R stand for? And what that stand for is, stands for is just a master of youth, family, and community sciences. So that's just the abbreviation that we have. Um, at NC State is just MR. So it's a, it's a master in youth, family, and community sciences. Um, the MR degree, we'll talk about, I'll talk about it in a little bit more detail, but it is um, kind of more practitioner focused. So if you know that you are, um, you're, that you're not going on to further academic work, um, but that your role or your goal is to really work in a community, to work in a nonprofit, to, um, to take your master's degree and to put that out in the world, um, the MR degree might be the one for you. Um, the MS degree is the Master of Science in Youth, Family, and Community Sciences, and the MS degree comes with a thesis option. So we'll talk a little bit about that um, in more detail, but those tend to be the big um, differences between the MR and the MR MS program. It's kind of what is your future focus? Are you going more into practice? And is this the, the, um, the final degree for you? Or are you thinking about maybe going on to additional academic work, in which case the MS might be appropriate? That's not to say that that is the answer for everyone, because we have students who um, are seeking an MS degree who um, you know, don't wanna go on to future academic work. They just really wanted to do the research and, um, and to write a thesis. And on the other side, we have students who have done the MR degree who have gone on to future academic work. So those aren't hard and fast rules, but I just wanted to share with you kind of the broad strokes of the differences between the two. Um, and so it, it's a big question, and I think it's a question that a lot of people have, and we're happy to help you um, think through that. But, um, but as you're thinking through it, you might want to learn a little bit more details about the particular program. So the MR uh, is a 30 credit master's program. It's, as I said, a non-thesis track. The final um, capstone for the MR degree is, as Dr. Gonzalez talked about, is our YFCS 500 course, which is an, basically an internship course um, where you complete 120 hours of intern hours and you work with um, you're in a class where you're learning from not only a faculty member, but also talking with your colleagues about the experience and thinking about how to process that internship experience in light of everything that you've learned through the program. So we really hope to, that for that 500 experience to be um, a true capstone and that it helps you to kind of process and move forward with the degree um, and thinking about all that you've learned and kind of how do you integrate that into practice. Um, you can see this is kind of the traditional track and timeline for our MR students. Um, the average time to completion is listed here, but um, a lot of our students are part-time. So if you take the part-time option and you're taking one or two courses a semester, it can take up to five years. If you are in full-time coursework, which is three credit or three courses, um, uh, nine credit hours a semester, then you can complete this degree in two years. Um, and let's see, um, uh, for the MR track, um, it is important that you work with your advisor and that you know your advisor, um, but it's not, uh, and we will, we will pair you with an advisor um, if you're admitted to the program who aligns with your interests. Um, but as Dr. Gonzalez said, if you're on the MS track, it's a little bit more important that you're um, that your advisor kind of matches closely your particular research interests, where it's not as important in the MR degree, you're getting kind of more of a broad background. And um, although you're going to learn from all of the faculty members, you know, your advisor is there to be sort of a sounding board for you, and they don't guide your, um, your particular research project, because it's a practice oriented degree. The MS degree, on the other hand, is 36 credit hours. So those additional six credit hours are three hours of, of thesis. So you have three hours of thesis writing, um, or, or a course where you're, you're working on and writing your thesis. And then you also have three hours of statistics that are required. So um, in addition to 
the thesis requirements, you also do the capstone requirement, just like the um, MR students. So all of our students are in the, um, the capstone um, program. It just serves in the 500 experience. It just serves as the capstone for the MR degree, whereas it's a, a, a piece along the way of getting your MS degree. It's typically you do the, the 500 experience kind of right before you do your thesis work. So again, even though this is a more academic track, the goal of our program is this continual kind of um, thinking about theory and practice and how do those two interact with each other. Most of our students are working professional, so you're out in the world, you're doing the work, and you bring those experiences into the classroom, so then you're, you're thinking about the, the things that you're doing out in practice, you're learning new theories, you're you know, incorporating those theories, and then you're changing the practice and changing the work that you do. Um, out into the world. So it's this kind of cycle of theory, practice, theory, practice. Um, and that's the goal with the MS degree as well. The MS degree has a little bit, there are a little bit uh, more pieces along the timeline because you've got to establish your committee, um, write a proposal for your thesis, and collect data, get, get approval for collecting all of that data, and then you write and defend the thesis. So it's a little bit longer um, and uh, it's got additional six hours of um, credits. The requirements for admissions to the master's program are here. Um, so you can see these on our website as well, but we require a minimum uh, 3.0 GPA. Um, there is an application fee and um, we do require three letters of recommendation. And what I will say after reviewing um, applications for several years with this program um, is we definitely encourage you to have at least one strong academic recommendation. Um, it's really helpful to us on the committee to make a decision if we know a little bit more about your academic background and how prepared you will be for a master's program. Um, the other two recommendations, though, can be from professional professional references. As I've talked about, you know, this program really we want you to bring theory and practice together. So we do want to learn about what you're doing in the world and what you have done and the professional experiences that you have. Um, we just want to also hear about your um, academic preparation for the degree. We have a writing sample that is required and the prompt is here. What is the role of family science in a diverse society? And we really do read those and, and take them very seriously. So I encourage you to spend time on your um, academic writing sample, have someone else read it for you, um, have someone else proofread it for you. Um, these are things that in the admission process that we, we do look at and we look at and we say, oh, you know, this, this might have been a strong application, but they didn't proofread or they didn't take much time writing the, the working on their writing sample. Um, so, uh, so definitely have others read it, take time writing it, and um, really think deeply about it because we do, we do take that very seriously, as well as the personal statement. Um, the personal statement is also a place where you can share with the admissions committee a little bit about not only what has brought you to this degree and why you want to be a part of our program and, and what, you, um, what you feel like you'll be able to contribute to the world with a degree from our program, but it's a place where you can tell us a little bit, for example, um, if you, if you um, have some some struggles on your trans that are reflected on your transcript. Um, you can write about those in the personal statement and it helps us to know you better as a candidate and to, to sort of fill out the picture that we get. Um, because if we just have you know, a transcript, those, are, those documents don't tell us much about you as a human being. And what we think about, and I can say this very seriously because we are very serious about this admissions process is we wanna think about you as a whole human being. Um, so while, you know, you don't want to use the personal statement to just kind of only tell your life story, you want it, you want it to have, um, you want it to convey to us a little bit about your, your, um, professional expectations and the things that you want to do and your vision and your goals. Um, but you can also help us to get to know you a little bit better using that personal statement. So again, have somebody else proofread it and have somebody else read it, um, will be very helpful. And then we also have require, do require your official transcripts um, in the admissions process. And I'm happy to answer any questions later about admissions um, that you might have, but I'm gonna turn it over to Deidre now, who's gonna talk a little bit about our certificate offerings. Hello, everyone. 
Um, so we do offer three certificates in our program, the Youth Development and Leadership Certificate, um, and that's geared towards students who want a deeper understanding of working with youth or in youth programming. Um, many of our students in the past have gone on to receive um, a master's um, after receiving a certificate. It's actually very common in our program. Um, so uh, some of our, our certificates are, are there to serve students who want to actually try out our program as well. Um, and if they're interested and they just want to get a feel for the classes, um, the program is actually designed for students to take one class per semester, but um, you can take as many as you want or as little as you want. Um, so we also offer the family life education and coaching certificate, and that certificate is geared towards students who want a deeper understanding about family life coaching. Um, and the courses that are offered in this certificate actually give you all the coaching hours you need to prepare you for a career in coaching or open in your own coaching consulting business. Um, you do have to take the BCC, which is the um, board certified coaching examination if you want to practice coaching. But there, the certifi certification gives you that extra boost that you need and coaching hours that you need to get through before you can take the examination. And then with the leadership and volunteer management certificate, that's geared towards students who want a deeper understanding of volunteerism or working in programs that focus on volunteerism. So that's just a kind of a highlight of our certificates that we offer. So like I said, it prepares professionals to better serve in their role as family life or parent educators or youth professionals. Um, just like the master's degree offerings, um, our certificates are also offered fully online. Um, each certificate is 12 credit hours. That's four classes, three credit hours per course. And like I said before, they're, they're all transferable into our master's program, all 12 credit hours. So you, these are the requirements that you need. So for the graduate, uh, you'll need, a, no, sorry. <laughs> Graduate of a four-year accredited um, college or university, um, unofficial undergraduate transcripts, um, just like the master's degree, you'll need a 3.0 GPA. Um, the fee is a little bit cheaper. It's $25 application fee. We'll also need a one-page personal statement. And the resume is optional, but always nice to have, especially um, if your application is not as strong or you don't feel as confident. The resume actually gives us a deeper understanding of kind of your experience in the field. Me. Yeah, I can go on ahead and explain <laughs> no, 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 the application <laughs> deadline. So, so uh, I, I can. Would you like me to? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So the application deadlines. Uh, it's fall admissions. It's July first, and spring admissions is November first. And this is our last time doing summer admissions. So, in this, the last summer admissions will be April first. And this is our very last time doing that. And we'll just go to strictly fall and spring admissions. And you can apply at the link right here, I think I'm gonna copy and paste it into, I'll send it to you in a chat actually. Um, and these are hard deadlines. We really wanna make this a very fair application process. And so we're very strict about the deadline. So anything past the deadline will be considered for the semester following. And I can talk a little bit about kind of our approach to admissions. As I mentioned earlier, you know, we want to know you as a full human being. And when we're looking as an admissions committee, whether that's for the certificate or whether that's for the master's programs, we want to, you know, know who you are um, because um, we will be together, you know, for some period of time. And um, and, and so we want to kind of get a sense of your, your passions, your interests, and the work that you've done and the work that you hope to do. Um, we do have some flexibility in the admissions program, um, but there are some hard and fast things that the graduate school will kind of kick back. So one is the GPA. And, um, and as Deidre mentioned, you know, if you have, um, 
If you have below a 3.0 GPA, but you're interested in the master's program, one way to um, demonstrate to us that you are capable of um, admission into the master's program and that you could um, you know, demonstrate an above 3.0 GPA is by taking courses through the certificate program or as a non-degree student um, at NC State. We recognize a lot of our students, um, I think Deidre is working with um, the College Communications Office on a story about this, but a lot of our students are coming back to, to, to graduate school or to school for the first time in a long time. And so, like I said earlier, there might be things in your life story, there might be struggles that you've had that have impacted your GPA and that have impacted um, you know, your grades in the past. And so we don't want that to um, keep you from a graduate education if you are meant to be um, you know, here in our program. And so, um, as Deidre mentioned earlier, the certificate program might be a nice way to demonstrate um, that you are ready for a master's program, that you are, you know, uh, that you're capable of, of holding a 3.0 or above GPA. And so if you're interested in that option or want to think about that with us, we're happy to um, either Deidre and I, or I can answer questions about that um, with the program. The tuition, this is another kind of um, important thing to know about the program. Um, the uh, tuition costs are set by the university. Actually, they're set by the um, they're set by the Board of Governors. So we are a part of the UNC system, the broader UNC system. And so the Board of Governors sets things like tuition. Um, and so uh, we, we don't have any control over what the tuition costs are, but you can always check on those with NC State. You can visit the cashier's office. Um, and then there's some websites available here where you can look at the, um, the costs at the university. But um, those are set beyond us. So even though we'd love to probably set the tuition rates, we are not able to. And that's something that comes from, um, not just from NC State, but from our broader system. But you can learn more about how much it would cost and, and your costs will be different depending on the number of credit hours you take. So if you are a part-time student, you know, and you're only taking one course, you would be paying for three credit hours. If you were a full-time student, you would be paying for nine credit hours. One thing that as the new director of our graduate programs that I'm learning more about is we do have um, we do have scholarship options at the college level or even at the university level that um, we want to start tapping into and some things that I'm becoming aware of that we want to um, that we want to put our students forward for. So we are going to be doing more of that in the future. And so if you have um, uh, don't don't hesitate to reach out to us. Don't hesitate to look on the NC State Scholarships and Financial Aid website. Um, if there are scholarships that we can put kind of put you in touch with, or if there are ways that we can support you for a scholarship at the university or the um, the college level, like we are going to be doing that a lot of that in the future. So um, we're hoping to 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 break down some of those barriers that people have to graduate education. And I mentioned some of this earlier, but our program really is, um, we are a fully distance education program, the master's program and the certificate program. Um, but that doesn't mean, I think before COVID, everyone thought that when you had um, distance teaching, that it meant that you would log into a website and that your professor would record a video and then you'd maybe do an assignment, um, which is what's called asynchronous um, learning. But Almost all of the courses in our program um, are incorporate synchronous learning. And that means that just like we are now, we gather in our courses and we get together in um, synchronous meetings. Um, and those are held in evening hours so that people who are working during the day can attend. Um, and we get together just the way that you would in another graduate seminar. So your professors might lecture some, you will have a lot of um, a lot of discussion. You know, we expect students to come to class having done the readings and being able to discuss those with us. You will present to each other as students. You will lead class on your own as students sometimes. It functions very similar to, to other um, graduate education um, programs in that way. We're just meeting each other over the computer as opposed to meeting each other in person. So we use Zoom a lot. Um, we use, we have a learning management uh, system called Moodle at NC State, um, but we try to make that customizable and flexible. So if, you know, um, 
if, if there is something that comes up that prevents you from being in class in the same way that, you know, if you had something that came up from pre preventing you from being in an in-person um, in, an in-person class, your professors will work with you and we want to be flexible with you. Um, and we're really like caring human beings. So we care a lot about our students, um, but we are designed for working adults. And so with that in mind, I want to turn it over to Raven Kingsbury, who I am so thankful that Raven is joining us because not only is she an alum of our program, but Raven also serves on our graduate studies committee. So is helping now to kind of set policy and help us to think about how to improve the, the YFCS program from the graduate students perspective. So Raven, I'll hand it over to you. And of course, I have minimal critique because the program is amazing. <laughs> but again, my name is Raven. Um, I just want to talk to you a little bit about my experience in the program. So I started out in summer of 2017. I was actually a student in the certificate program for um, family life coaching and education. I transitioned into the master's program after I took that one course in family life coaching and I enjoyed it so much. Um, the transition was kind of seamless. Um, I think I remember reaching out to Deidre and just kind of um, submitting my application and touching base with her and getting information on how um, to move forward. Uh, at the time and, and since I was in the program and graduated in December, I've been a full-time employee. It has not been a program that has been so overwhelming or um, so strenuous that I have felt that it was too much at any time. I know that that experience would be different for everyone. Um, but again, I think that it's really important and worth noting that this program is so flexible as, as it's been said, it's so flexible um, in the sense that whatever, whatever you need to work for you, the faculty is more than happy to work with you. I remember having a peer um, who was actually, she lives in Dubai. Um, we graduated together actually in December and I can recall so many of our class sessions, um, whether she was there or not, the professor would always mention like we do have this student who is um, international and she may or may not be joining us. So just that kind of energy of saying, hey, we are here for you, whatever it is that you need um, in terms of support, we are here to make sure that you're able to show up at, as your best um, in terms of being a student. I would say that on average, I took about two classes a semester. And again, it was manageable being a full-time employee. Um, I mostly enjoyed the consistent scheduling. Um, I think my classes were Mondays and Wednesdays, Mondays and Wednesdays, maybe occasional Thursday, but that was pretty consistent from semester to semester. So that was extremely helpful in just planning and kind of wrapping my head around getting in the consistency in this in the routine of uh, school and graduate school um, more than anything. In terms of navigating, um, as it's been mentioned, Moodle is our learning system. It is extremely user friendly. And if not, um, there is a virtual orientation that is available through our distance education department that will give you a step by step of how to work that platform. If you are here with us today, you are uh, probably pretty familiar with Zoom. But again, if you are not, uh, we do have options. Um, through the help desk that will help you in terms of your technology, making sure that things are up to date, if you're having any issues and just making sure that you are able to participate in the best way possible. In terms of engagement with instructors and peers, I will say that I had the best experience. Most of my courses were completely intimate, I would say. Um, and that's just just kind of going from the larger lecture hall classes that you would see in undergraduate to going to a class of probably uh, usually around 20 or less. It gave me the opportunity to get to know my peers. There were several different courses where it was not just a class discussion where we were actually exchanging emails and exchanging telephone numbers and just kind of engaging with ourselves outside of that and just supporting each other in that way. And in that same way, the faculty has been more than helpful. Um, they're always readily available for any time you have questions, anything, you can shoot them an email. I literally have um, emailed a professor and they're like, hey, wait, you don't even have to email. We can hop on a quick Zoom, we can hop on a telephone call, whatever makes you most comfortable, just making sure that you are as acclimated as possible to the program. Um, some of the DE resources that I would say um, were most useful for me, um, the Writing Center. So the University Tutorial Center um, offers writing help. 
um, which is extremely helpful when you're transitioning into the program, especially just kind of learning how to get on that level um, and making sure that uh, you are, you know, getting feedback to continue to better yourself as a writer and um, just as a graduate student in um, academia. There's also skills skills courses where you can learn time management if that's something that you're dealing with, whether or not you are a person that has a family, a person that is working full time or just a student who has graduated from undergrad full time and is working, um, working in this program part time. No matter what it is, they have um, the ability to kind of help you with those things. Like I said, time management, study skills, anything that's going to help you succeed in this program. Um, and then career services. So aside from um, the career advice that is offered directly in the program, the College of Agriculture and Life, Service, uh, Life Sciences also has the Career Services Center. And anytime that you want help being connected to um, the industries, or if you just want help with a resume, a cover letter, any type of interview feedback, that's definitely a resource um, that you probably would love to check out. Um, I think, yeah, that's a that's about it uh, for my experience. Again, I graduated in December of 2020 uh, in the MR track, and I am considering going back um, for a doctorate degree. So I've been told so far that um, that all it's going to take is just a little bit of looking at the courses that I've completed and maybe taking one or two other courses to kind of get me up to speed. And then I'll be able to um, also transition into the MS track. So it's just all around a really good program, no matter what part of it you want to participate in, whether you want to do a certificate, you want to go and do the whole master's, or if you are already anticipating moving on to the doctorate level. Thank you, Raven. That, um... That was great. And I think one of the things that Raven pointed out that is that is really great about this program is that you have not only this program, which as Raven said, like feels really um, close and like you, you will get to know your peers, you will get to know the faculty really well over the course of your program, but you also have this huge university and all of, and a lot of the resources that are available um, through the university. Um, not everything is available through for distance education students, but resources like the Writing Center, resources like the Career Center, there are lots of professional development resources that we, you know, share with our students, um, and I really appreciate you bringing that to light. Um, so with that, I want to talk a little bit about um, careers um, and what our alums are doing in the world and the kind of things that they want to do in the world. Um, and then we will open it up for questions from you. So um, the uh, YFCS alums are doing all sorts of things in the world. Um, and there are lots of different career options with our program. So, you know, things that you will learn and concrete skills that you will learn in our program include things like um, you know, working on a grant, doing program development, learning how to evaluate a program. Um, you'll also gain a broad theoretical knowledge and understanding of families and family systems and, and, and youth and um, kind of principles in youth development. Um, and so those foundational theories can help you to have the content that you need to work in, you know, nonprofits that are focused on youth, families, communities, to work in the education system. Um, and, you know, we have a, a very robust coaching program, as Deidre was mentioning earlier, with the coaching certificate. So if you're interested in working in families in a kind of more one-on-one -on -one way to help support them and help them to move forward with what they want to do and the practices that they would like to adopt as a family, coaching is really important. Um, but we, you will, through this program, gain both the kind of theoretical knowledge that you would need to work in a variety of sectors, but also those practical skills in program development, evaluation, even research methods, um, which is a, a hard course. You know, it's, it's hard to like learn how to be a researcher and think like a researcher and process the world like a researcher. But, but even research methods is really vital because everyone who's going out to work in this world, you need to know how to... Um, how to find good research and how to even do good research. Because how many of you have been asked maybe in your current job to, to do a survey, to send out a survey to someone? Um, and if you know how to design a good survey from taking a research methods course, it's gonna be that much stronger. 
So we try to like blend those things um, for our students, both the practice and the theory, so that you go out into the world into these various career options and tracks um, with the preparation that you need. Um, and then there are just some stats here, and we would be happy to share if uh, if you're interested. Uh, Deidre developed a really beautiful um, career booklet that um, shares a little bit more about our students. Um, some of these students who are going to be on this next slide, it gives you a little bit of their background, tells you what they're doing, how they're doing that in the world. And I think one of the most fascinating things about being a part of this program is all of the different things that our students do. So it's very hard when somebody asks me, I had someone asked me today, my doctor asked me, I had a physical today, and she said, so what do you teach? And I said, well, my program is called Youth Family and Community Sciences. And she was like, well, what is that? So I explained a little bit about what we do and how we, you know, uh, the, what our students do in the community development, youth development, family science arenas. She's like, well, what are some of the things that your students do? And it's like so many different things, just my advisees. I could name, you know, so many different things that they're out there doing. So you can see here, you know, working in advocacy organizations, working as parent coaches, um, working um, and developing youth sport leagues. Um, working as for the military and doing kind of youth development programming, working for nonprofits. Um, our students are also working in the educational realm. Um, you know, so they're working for either a particular school, they might be working in a childcare center, um, or they might be working in um, kind of a more leadership and programmatic role for somewhere like the Department of Health and Human Services. So they do all sorts of things. Um, and we, we see here, we have uh, students as well who are researchers who are going out and doing research with their master's degree. So there are lots of different things that you can do. And when you look at the coursework and when you look at what our faculty do, you'll get a better sense of that. Um, but we are, we are an interdisciplinary program, but we're interdisciplinary in a way that um, I think brings it all together because our, our focus is on empowering youth, families, and communities um, to, to strive towards health, to think about and strive towards equity, and, um, and, and to just strive towards like wellness and well-being. So I think that if you look across all of our students and the faculty and the work that we do, those are some of the core tenets um, that you will both learn in our program and that you will um, see in our alums as well. So I'll turn it over to Deidre for some final comments about how you can stay connected with us. Hello again, everybody. So we have a couple of different ways that you can stay connected with us. We want to continue to talk with you and answer all of your questions. So I'm gonna drop not only our email addresses, but our Instagram, our Twitter, and our Facebook handles into the group chat, as well as a link to our department website and our program website. And on our program website, it has a lot of FAQs on there. So if there's any specific questions that you have, the FAQs may be able to answer that. Of course, um, you can reach out to any one of us um, and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions regarding admissions. Um, but our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter handle is there as well. And we provide information for prospective students as well as current students. So feel free to check us out, like, comment, follow, subscribe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So we are now open for your questions. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing so that we can see your faces. Um, if you all have any questions for us that you would like for us to answer. Now is the time. But thank you all very much. It's, um, it's been nice to get to share a little bit about our program. And I really appreciate um, Raven and Dr. Gonzalez for sharing your perspectives as well. So. Um, hi, I have a question. Okay. <laughs> um, hey, uh, my name is Rachel and I'm a teacher. Um, I teach eighth grade at a middle school um, and sort of investigating possible futures um, and just kind of very open to like considering a lot of options. And so I'm kind of looking for, to some extent, some direction on like clear options to choose from. 